Welcome to part two. This next portion of the spell is inspired by the Holly Witch. Her representation and use of a rose as a petition paper is such a great element to embody beauty, femininity, softness, and self-love. As you can see, I cleansed the rose in frankincense incense. Now I am going to say my prayers over the rose. I'll begin peeling back the inner layers so that I can fit our ingredients into this. Now I'm going to add in frankincense and dragon's blood to give more power and oomph to this work, as well as bring in this energy of life and vitality going to mix that up and this is also the point where you can add in any ritual oils this is my beauty oil but do what feels right for you I will also be adding in some high John the Conqueror oil this will just add more power and potency to protect my beauty Now you're going to take a paintbrush and you're going to use this blessed mixture to write your name on the rose as the petition, linking the rose to you. Whatever energies are sent to this rose are sent to you. Aloe has long been used as a representation of beauty, health, and vitality, and we'll be blessing it for this purpose. I'm going to take my hair and wrap it around the aloe, almost binding the aloe with my energy so that they become one. Now I will place the aloe in the center of the rose, and this will be where I place all of our ingredients. I'm now adding in the frankincense and dragon's blood mixture from before. And of course, with every step, you're going to bless and activate your ingredients. I'll be adding in my spell oils now. This is the Empress oil. I'll also be adding in my High John the Conqueror oil as well. Now we're gonna add our herbs. Damiana is great for awakening the divine feminine energy, boosting your sexual appeal, as well as allowing you to awaken your sacral chakra. Now we're adding in some crystals. Garnet is also really great for grounding you, opening up your sacral chakra and healing your root chakra as well. It's great for health and vitality and creating passion within oneself. Now we will begin to bind our beauty. With a purple cord, you will wrap your rose, binding all the ingredients, all the intentions to merge as one, allowing them to be solidified into the spiritual and physical reality. Once you finish, make sure to tie and knot at the very end three times to lock it in. So now we're moving on to our candle magic. We'll start by writing our petition. That can be different for every single person. So write what you feel. I'm not gonna go over my petition structure because if you've seen it in my other videos and you know how I do it, you're gonna fold up your petition paper into a small packet, easy enough to fit inside the bottom of your candle. This next portion, we're going to just load our candle. So that means taking the wax out and beginning to put our ingredients inside. You'll start with your petition paper and then you'll add other ingredients such as your hair, your spit, and I'm, as you can see, using my blood ink to tie this even deeper to me. Then you're going to put your wax back in and just melt the wax over until you have a flat base again and all of those ingredients are firmly inside of the candle. This is loading your candle.
Now we're going to use that mixture that we use to bless our face and our skin as a baptizing agent for our entire being over our candle. So first we will baptize our candle with some Florida water. And this practice is just to put the soul or the life of whoever it is you're doing this working on, obviously it's going to be yourself if you're doing this for you, into the candle bring it to life, baptize it with spirit and energy so that it can be a full representation of you. I'm also going to bathe our assisting, our supporting candles in the mixture as well to cleanse them, but to also charge them with this same vibrational energy. Now you're going to see me breathe life into the candle, whether that be with prayers, affirmations, incantations, but I'm going to take my life force energy with my breath and push it into the candle. So you want to give these items a chance to fully air dry because you don't want to start making magic with them while they're still wet. This could impact the way that they burn. Think of it the same way as taking a spiritual bath and how you want to air dry as not to lose the magical energy. So it's day two and we're back. Now we're going to anoint our candles with our spell oils. I'm going to be using the Empress oil. I'm going to be using my Love More oil from uh, the honey jar. I'm also going to be using a little bit of my Fill In Myself oil, which is a self-love oil. But you can do whatever you have or whatever feels right for you for this work. And you're also going to want to include in this absolutely a beauty oil of your choosing. It could be an attraction oil. It could be a Baba Voom oil from Conjacardia. But you want to have that element included there as well. Um, because this is a beauty spell. Something that I really love about this ritual is that there's so many moments to really be tender and gentle with the process, to really see it as a representation of how you want to feel within yourself and how you want it to show up and manifest in your reality. This work is soothing, it's meditative, it can be so calming and really joyful to do. So take the opportunity to make every single step of this work something that feels meaningful and beautiful to you. So as you can see, I'm using some road opener powder. This is just going to help remove any blockages to this work as my supporting candles are meant to do just that, support. And so anything that's stopping the flow of that work from manifesting, I want to clear the way so that the magic can impact on a deeper level. Now I'm going to dress my main candle with some glamour magic incense. Same herbal mixture, blessed with that intention of beauty and attraction, as well as self-love, so the perfect herbal blend for this work. This next step is very important. You're going to take a gold candle. If you don't have gold, you can use yellow or even white. And you're going to anoint it with either a high John, the conqueror oil, or something that grants you favor, success, victory, um, anything that's going to boost the, um, the overall success of this work. You're gonna anoint that candle with it. We use gold because gold is something that represents um, vitality and longevity of health. You're gonna anoint that candle and this will be the candle that you use to seal your rose. All the ingredients inside should be locked in and you can use this wax as a way to emulsify those ingredients as one. 
I also included my beauty oil as well, so if you want to add that in there, feel free to do that. Once you've completed that step, you can use your gold candle to light the rest of your candles and to get this work started. So this next portion of the ritual, this is the last step, is to bury or to plant your rose someplace that is in a healthy environment. So you want to bury it at the base of a really healthy tree that maybe you do a lot of work at. Maybe you want to put it in a plant that you already have growing that's doing really well. Um, I'm just going to be putting it into a planter um, and I'm going to try to see if I can grow some flowers over the top of it so I just don't forget about it. But I would make sure that if you're going to do this outside someplace away from your house that it's really hidden very well so that no one can mess with the spell work that you're doing. Um, as you can see here, I'm actually pouring some moon water over this that was in um, the energy of Libra, which is a great sign for beauty work. Um, but again, I have this in my backyard so I know where it's at and I can let it soak up the sun every single day. So that's it, witches. Tell me what you think about this ritual. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Be blessed. Pull out the candles, pull out the crystals, pull out the recipe.